The guest finds a portrait at a thrift store and gets a surprising appraisal, a painting signed by Fulton Ross for $45 at an antique store in Patchogue, Long Island. The appraiser reveals the artist to be Gail Fulton Ross, a sculptor, printmaker, and primarily a portrait painter. She's primarily known as a portrait painter, but she does sculpture and printmaking as well. The oil on canvas painting is titled Gigi and is dated 1995. It depicts a woman and features splatters of paint, which the appraiser initially thought was damaged. Splatters are deliberate and add an expressionistic flair to the portrait. And it's funny because when I first saw this painting, I thought there was something wrong with it because, <laughs> as you can see, all these... As an English teacher, the guest is drawn to the contrast between the formality of the subject and the rebelliousness of the splatters. Given its size, signed, and dated status, and the artist's reputation, the appraiser values the painting at... I would actually put the value somewhere around 17500 retail. Oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. That's every uh, thrift shopper's dream. Purchased by the guest at a flea market in Orlando in the 1970s for just $5, this inkwell caught the guest eye with its intricate artwork and vibrant coloring. While initially mistaken for a pen wipe, further inspection reveals it to be a rare inkwell made by the Tiffany Glass and Decorating Company. <laughs> we know it as Tiffany Studios, but it didn't become Tiffany Studios until around 1900. This Art Nouveau ink style features a unique interlacing design and a mosaic with iridescence, indicating its early production in Tiffany's line. Unlike standard desk set pieces with pattern names, this inkwell's pattern remains unnamed, adding to its rarity. While missing its original tiny cover, it's possible to have a reproduction cast in bronze, which wouldn't affect its value significantly. Comparable inkwells with the same model number have been auctioned for around $6,000, but with its original cover, its value could potentially reach fifteen dollars to $20,000. Oh my gosh! I'm shocked. It is lovely, but... Making it a remarkable find for just $5. This piece, believed to be the Anheuser-Busch logo, has a fascinating history tied to the Guest family. Originally from a jewelry store in El Reno, Oklahoma, owned by the Guest great-uncle, it was acquired by the Guest grandfather when the store closed. The Guest mother had it evaluated by the brewery historian, who dated it to... And she could date it to 1919 based on the positioning of the eagle's foot, but we really don't know a lot more about it. The logo features the typical A for Anheuser with a silver eagle, showcasing meticulous craftsmanship on both sides. The spread eagle motif, with its wings over the A, is indicative of an early 1900s design. It's made of 14 karat gold with rose-cut diamonds on the branch. This piece is well articulated and a rare find. At auction, it could fetch between one to two thousand dollars. Very nice. Very happy to know that finally highlighting its value and historical significance as a piece of brewery memorabilia. This item is a carved piece of wood dated 1775 with the initials A.S. It's likely representing the carver's wife or girlfriend. This item was inherited to our guest by his grandfather. It's identified as a stay busk, which would have been worn by women in the 18th century. The stay busk would fit into a pocket at the front of a corset encouraging proper posture and lifting the breast. The appraiser humorously explores various incorrect guesses about its use, such as... A ruler? Oh, yeah, it could be used... Well, it's a straight edge, certainly could be used for a ruler. Ceremonial? Ceremonial, it's the sort of thing you hold to give you a bit of, um, I don't know, power. It is given by a lover to his beloved to remind her of him whenever she wears it. Despite the simple design and faux cast quality, the item is valued at eight to twelve thousand pounds. Oh, I thought ten pound the most. I can't believe so, um, it. This antique is highly desirable among the collectors because of its historical significance and romantic story. The Guest family acquired this beautiful piece of art clock in England in the early 1960s. The Guest remembered his relative paying around five hundred dollars for the clock. The clock was a remarkable example of black forest craftsmanship carved in southern Germany. The clock had intricate details, such as the eagle, dog, and foliage, 
and its creation date was estimated to be around 1860 or 1870. This has a French clockwork that was probably made around 1850 or 60. Despite its age, the clock was described as being in excellent condition. The appraiser valued the clock at approximately ten to twelve thousand dollars in today's market. The guests expressed their satisfaction with this assessment. This Hanukkah lamp was given to the guest's father for his bar mitzvah in Germany on April 1, 1933. This was the same day when Hitler's anti-Jewish measures were first enforced. Despite the hardships faced by the guest grandparents and father while trying to leave Germany in 1938, they made sure to keep this piece safe. This Hanukkah lamp was crafted in the early 20th century. It was made from 800 fine silver and adorned with symbolic motifs such as lions, the ark, and a crown, typical of Hanukkah lamps. However, it lacked the shamash, a central candle holder. The appraiser estimated its value at approximately $3,500 for insurance purposes, despite the missing shamash. The guest expressed surprise at its value, but pledged to cherish and preserve it. Really? I, I mean, it's not that important, but I'm, I'm surprised. The guest brought in a pair of intricately carved jade lion dogs, with no prior knowledge of what it is. These statues symbolized a wish for high achievement traditionally given as a gift to someone embarking on a new endeavor. This particular pair holds a special significance for the guest, having been brought back from Japan by her father in the 1950s. He was sent as the, the man's uh, basic companion, and he was looking out for him because he was an heir to the baronetcy. A close examination of the lion dogs shows the jade as Chinese nephrite from the late 18th or 19th century. While there were some minor damage... Several key characteristics indicates it's a genuine antique, like the material itself, which is Chinese nephrite, the surface polish that modern replicas couldn't replicate, and the presence of brown markings that were a natural feature of aged jade. Despite a missing ribbon, the estimated value of this item is at a surprising... Be 8,000 pounds? Really? <laughs> That's wonderful! The guest brought in a helmet instantly recognizable to any Star Wars fan as the original TIE Fighter pilot helmet from the 1977 film. The movie was groundbreaking and had immense cultural impact, a sentiment any sci-fi enthusiast would share. This particular helmet was one of only 12 made for the first film, making it an incredibly rare and sought-after piece. The guests spent years tracking down such movie props and eventually found this one hidden away in the attic of a senior crew member who had received it as a gift after filming. While the guest had paid a few thousand pounds for it, the value of this piece transcends that of money and holds both historical and sentimental significance. Its current value is estimated to be a staggering... forty to 50,000... Yeah, I think, I think... On this a, bit of yeah. plastic? <laughs> <laughs> this collection, once belonging to James Mason, a senator from Virginia before the Civil War, holds significant historical value. During the Civil War, Mason was appointed as a commissioner to England to seek support for the Confederacy. He boarded a ship in Charleston with a gentleman from Louisiana, John Slidell, called the Trent. It was a British mail ship. And they uh, ran the blockade in Charleston and were landed in Cuba. The arrest caused diplomatic tension between the U.S. and Britain as the British aristocracy sympathized with the Confederacy. At some point, I think the Queen actually said, you need to let them out or we're going to do more than we're doing that right now and it'll, it'll be for the South. The collection includes Mason's box, liquor cabinet, and a carte de viste photograph. The snuff box, inscribed to Mason from the Bears Fords of England, commemorates his time as a special commissioner for the Confederate States of America in England. The collection's value is estimated at around $100 for the photograph, a few hundred dollars for the Constitution book, a couple of thousand dollars for the liquor cabinet, and $10,000 to $15,000 for the sterling snuff box, making it a remarkable piece of Civil War history. These illustrations, recently inherited from the guest grandmother and sent by their dad, are significant pieces of American book and magazine illustration history. Created by the guest great-grandfather, James Montgomery Flagg, a renowned illustrator, these illustrations hold a rich family legacy. 
It's interesting that he sold his first illustration when he was only 12 years old to St. Nicholas Magazine. Uh, he went on later at the ripe old age of 14 to start as a life illustrator. One illustration depicts a family scene, likely for Good Housekeeping Magazine, showcasing Flagg's early talent and humor. Another set of illustrations portrays early 20th century America, possibly used for various publications like Good Housekeeping, Liberty, or Cosmopolitan. And this terrific one, oh, why shouldn't he have eaten those popovers? Uh -huh. <laughs> Perhaps what he's best known for, though, is the tremendous illustrations of Uncle Sam. However, Flagg is most renowned for his iconic Uncle Sam illustrations, which became symbols of American patriotism during World War I and were reused in World War II. The guest brought about 10 illustrations in varying sizes and conditions, overall in good shape with some toning. This collection is valued between eight to ten thousand dollars. Wow, that's very nice. <laughs> Tattoos are widely accepted art nowadays, and people love carving designs on their bodies. Vintage flash art, which showcases tattoo designs from past eras, has gained traction as a collectible item. The appraiser discussed a vintage tattoo design book likely dating back to the late 19th century potentially owned by a sailor on the USS Chicago. The vintage book was estimated to fetch five to $7,000 at auction. The other piece was renowned tattoo artist Norman Collins, also known as Sailor Jerry, from the late 1950s or 60s. Sailor Jerry's piece was valued at $1,800 to $5,000, depending on color and condition. I can see that this one's been preserved and cared for, but this is very thin paper. Does that affect the value? It does. It's on tissue. If it was on watercolor paper or was on a heavier board and had a lot of color work on it, it would probably be worth two to three times what this one is. The other thing presented for appraisal was tattoo artistry by Stoney St. Clair, a former circus performer who transitioned into tattoo artistry. The appraiser estimated the value of a piece of St. Clair's flash art at $1,800 to $2,000. Overall, the segment offered viewers a glimpse into the rich history and artistic legacy of tattoo culture, as well as the growing interest in collecting vintage tattoo art. This bowl, originating from Japan, is a unique piece that blends both Eastern and Western artistic styles. Dating back to 1901, it features a serrated rim reminiscent of cut glass, a stem with European design, and exquisite painting against a dense iron-red Mirafiori ground. The painting depicts ladies enjoying themselves in Pine Grove, showcasing superb quality. It is believed to have been an exhibition piece due to its high quality. Today, Japanese collectors highly value such export ware pieces, with this bowl estimated to be worth between three to 5,000 pounds. The guest brought in a potentially valuable first edition of Tolkien's The Hobbit. The presence of the dust jacket, though a bit chipped, is a good sign for collectors who highly value them. The book itself is in good condition, but a piece of sticky tape used to attach a letter had damaged the front page, which could significantly reduce the value for collectors. The attached letter, however, is a gem as well, a handwritten note from Tolkien himself addressed to his dearest Jane. This revelation confirmed a family connection to the Tolkien lineage through the guest husband. The book itself held further significance, originating from J.R.R. Tolkien's personal library and was gifted to the guest husband as a child. The Hobbit was written in 1937, and it was the first book in the famous trilogy The Lord of the Rings, which is quite popular. Adding to the value was a first edition mistake Tolkien himself supposedly corrected on the dust jacket a crossed-out E in a character's name. Considering all these factors, the first edition status, the dust jacket, the inscription, the letter, and the family connection, the book holds enormous value. At auction, it would sell for... Three and a half thousand pounds for it. Wow, that's amazing. It is, isn't it? Yeah. This federal mahogany, rosewood, and birchwood inlaid bowfront server was purchased by the guest from a couple going through a divorce who needed to sell it quickly. They thought it was from the East Coast somewhere. Likely made in Salem, Massachusetts, this piece shows hallmarks of the cabinet maker William Hook. At the top, you see these wonderful outset corners with turned rondelles, and then it continues to this great 
molding here with this kind of rope. Known for his detailed craftsmanship. The server features exquisite veneer work with alternating light and dark panels creating a sunburst effect and a fan inlay at the bottom adding to its elegance. Details such as outset corners with turn roundels, rope form beading, and water leaf carving further showcase the quality of this piece. The server has been refinished, possibly retaining its original punched brass hardware, and is in great condition, showcasing Hook's meticulous attention to detail, including finishing the back and adding extra veneer panels. A similar piece made for Hook's sister, Hannah Hook Folsom, is housed at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, dating this server to circa 1810. Despite initially paying $1,800 for the piece, the guest has made a wise investment, as its estimated value at auction is between five dollars to $8,000. Wow, wow. The guest inherited the box, part of a pair, from their grandparents who hailed from Boston. The appraiser explained that they were designed for storing cutlery on dining room sideboards, which became popular in the late 18th and 19th centuries. The appraiser further highlighted the box's features, including its arrangement for holding knives, forks, and spoons. And then they would have been locked up, this beautiful silver-mounted lock here, to keep the silver flatware safe when it wasn't being used. The appraiser also noted the rarity of having a pair of such boxes, especially ones of American origin. The Boston's mahogany construction and Boston-style sawtooth inlay decoration further enhanced its value. The appraiser estimated the value of a single box to be around $8,000. The guest was visibly moved by the appraisal, expressing surprise and gratitude for the item's significance and value. Uh, <laughs> there's a Kleenex. Oh, my God. Isn't it amazing? Jeez. A sculpture was showcased by the guest, obtained from her ex-husband's uncle. It was made by a renowned American sculptor, Heim Gross. The appraiser provided background information on Heim Gross, noting that he was born in Europe in 1904 and immigrated to the United States in the 1920s. He was primarily known for direct carving using a hammer and chisel. This particular sculpture was likely from the 30s or 40s. The wood used was identified as lignum vitae, known for its density. At a gallery, the sculpture would have been valued at at a gallery, it would be in the $5,000 range. Oh, nice. Okay, good. The guest presented a wonderful vase at the show. The appraiser identified the vase from the Teco Company. Founded in 1881, Teco Company was a prominent American manufacturer. The company produced a wide range of architectural elements, including tiles and decorative vases. Due to the intricate craftsmanship and innovating glazing techniques, Teco pieces are highly collectible. Considering the artistic quality and historical significance, the appraiser estimated the beautiful piece for... This one here would bring at auction at least $12,000. Yes! Oh, yes! 